Breath of the Wild's Hyrule is filled to the brim with multiple secrets and mysteries yet to be solved. From the colossal statues within the desert that are said to be the divine protectors of the Gerudo, to the three labyrinths which lay in the regions of Hebra, Akala, and the Wasteland. Most of the information regarding these ancient structures comes not from the location, but the insight of other characters. And yet, these mysteries are for the most part left unsolved. We're given bits and pieces of the puzzle, but not enough to grasp the overall picture. In the past, we've discussed the eighth heroine, Hyrule's ancient fossils and their ties to the Leviathans, and the origins of the Sheikah's technology. Today's video will be about another topic that's long overdue, and it's not of a location, but a person. Within the vast region of Akala, there exists a bizarre landform to the north. A small lake with rocky formations, the textures of which resemble leviathan bones. Aside from a towering pillar which holds a shrine, the most notable feature is its top-down perspective on the map, as it has the shape of a skull. This quirk is what gives it the name, Skull Lake. Within the water lay giant purple flower-like plants. But this landform holds one more secret. At night, the player can find a mysterious shop called Fane and Bone. This small business is run by Kilton, an individual who has a strange obsession with monsters. Upon the initial meeting, his shop will become available to the player during the nighttime at multiple settlements such as Kakariko Village and Zora's Domain. Kilton's shop is very useful as the player can get many exclusive items here, ranging from masks to blend in with the monsters to the dark set. The more divine beasts you freed, the more items become available. Defeating the final boss will unlock everything from the shop. What's unique about Fane and Bone is how Kilton uses his own type of currency. Instead of spending rupees, you exchange monster parts for Mon. In return, you can spend this Mon to obtain the items sold at a shop. But the player soon realizes just how off Kilton is. His obsession with monsters is portrayed as rather disturbing. Feeling guilt for having Link kill monsters for the sake of his research. Who exactly is Kilton? It turns out, there's much more to this question than you'd expect. One misconception people have is that Kilton is, by default, a sort of monster given his appearance. However, not all of his features are natural. Upon closer inspection, we can see that the fangs were painted on his face, and that the claws are simply gloves that extend all the way to the elbows. Though, his ties to monsters don't end there, as his whole business involves the trading of monster parts for the sake of his research. It's never stated in the game what race he is, but it's possible that he's Hylian. What's odd is that he never makes an appearance in Goron City, most likely because he can't survive in the heat. In the Japanese version of the game, the shop is called Momono Shapu, translating to Monster Shop. And just like the localization, he collects Momono Soze, monster materials. But what does he exactly do with the monster parts you give him? All we have to do is look at what he sells to find the answer. One of the first products for sale is the Monster Extract, said to be a result of Kilton's research into monsters. The player can use this to make a variety of monstrous meals. To be more specific, monster cake, curry, rice balls, stew, and soup. The amount of hearts these meals recover is randomized each time one is cooked. Another product sold is the masks you can wear that resemble a Bokoblin, Moblin, Lizelfos, and Lionel. This is where we can learn a lot more about Kilton. All of these masks have a special purpose, to let people blend in with monsters without being attacked. One of the missions Kilton gives the player is to defeat every type of Talus, Hinox, and Mulduga in Hyrule so he can analyze the scent of their fluids that will inevitably stick to your body during battle. When we consider this quote, his research makes a lot of sense in relation to the masks. He uses the monster parts such as the horns to replicate the facial features, as well as use the others to capture the scent of the enemies. This is done so that those who wear it can trick the creature into believing it's one of them. The only enemy to see through this facade is the Lionel, thanks to their high intelligence. After a while, this enemy will attack any player wearing the mask. 
Kilton states that he's tried to get close to the mini-bosses, but can't due to their massive size. It's clear that his goal is to observe these monsters for the sake of research, a desire to know their habitats, behaviors, and overall qualities. We never see Kilton in the daytime. It's possible that he spends that time living with the Bokoblin and Lizalfos tribes with the help of his masks. By nightfall, he runs a business that helps with his research and love for monsters. This is where things start to get confusing. Kilton collects monster parts to further his studies, and yet the player is capable of trading both machine and dragon parts. The compendium does put them all in the monsters category, however the former is only, well, machine parts, and the dragons are said to be elemental spirits that take the form of dragons. Unlike the monsters, they bear no ill will towards people. These parts shouldn't have any value to Kilton, and yet he accepts them in his shop? After some digging, I found a plausible solution. One of the items sold is a spring-loaded hammer, a weapon that sends enemies flying. It can only be obtained from Kilton's shop, but pay close attention to the item's name. A spring-loaded hammer. Could the ancient spring from the Guardians have been used to create this weapon? The very nature of this item gives Kilton a bit of a childish side. It's possible that he uses these parts to make silly contraptions for his own entertainment. His shop is an air balloon. Perhaps the other parts are used for upgrades or repairs. Regarding the dragon materials, all of them can be used in cooking to drastically increase the duration for special effects. It's possible that these don't produce monster extract by themselves, but help with the overall quality or quantity of the product. Therefore, this material would be very valuable to Kilton, since he can use it with some monster parts to produce a better product. Everything he sells appears to be connected in some way to the monster parts he collects. Even the currency used, Mon, is implied to be made of monsters themselves. But this doesn't make him malicious. That's the equivalent of saying that Hanji Zoe is evil for obsessing over titans. We can get more information about Kilton from some of the characters in the game. When exploring the land of Hyrule, you may come across a lone traveler named Chabi, who's been attacked by a Bokoblin. If the player comes to her rescue, she'll give them a monster extract. She states that, despite it being made from monsters, it makes any food taste amazing, and that there are weird stories going around about that Kilton character. He's obsessed with monsters, and does all kinds of hair-raising research with them. Chabi hopes to one day meet him so she can see if these rumors are true, meaning the monster extract must have been given to her by someone else. She mentions a source that says he's most often found at Skull Lake, this source possibly being Tracy, a Hylian journalist who wrote the rumor mill books. She never ends up finding him, but will continue to give the player this spice. Someone must be visiting Kilton's shop on a regular basis. But these rumors of a character obsessed with monsters don't sit very well with other Hylians. At the South Akala Stable, Kefa describes Kilton as a suspicious individual, and how the East Akala Stable is hiring soldiers for protection due to those rumors. The player can go to this stable and talk to a soldier named Hawes, who sends Link on a quest to get a picture of Kilton. He describes his activity as suspicious and otherworldly. After you get the picture, Hawes says the following. I wonder what kind of stuff Kilton's Fane and Bone Shop sells. Fanes? Bones? Evil things for evil? The more I think about it, the more it gives me the creeps. But this is all based on rumors, none of these people have actually met him. If he's dealing with monsters, it is possible that monster extract is simply malice. It has a very similar color, the only problem is how the player can also trade machine and dragon parts. But as we already established, it's possible that only the monster parts are used to make the spice. If that's the case, then this could indeed be extracted monster malice. One of the dishes that this ingredient makes, the monster cake, is brought up on multiple occasions, its most notable appearance being in Hyrule Castle. A book with the cake's recipe is within the library. This is where things get spicy. Pun definitely intended. The Royal Family Secret Recipe Number 2, the Chancellor's Favorite, Monster Cake. Stew monster extract, tabantha wheat, cane sugar, and goat butter for a spell. It's a dangerous dish that makes your head fuzzy and may even motivate you to plan evil schemes. Since this book has been here for at least a hundred years, it means that Kilton wasn't the first to create monster extract. 
In addition to this, it implies that a part of the research of the royal family was focused on monsters, similar to Kilton. Either information of this ingredient was passed down to him, or he somehow obtained it. The part about making a person's head fuzzy and motivating them to plan evil schemes is very interesting. Plus, this cake was the Chancellor's favorite. This could be a reference to Chancellor Cole from Spirit Tracks. Or so I thought. You see, when researching this video, I came to a realization of sorts. I had assumed this was referring to the Chancellor Cole, but what if this is a different Chancellor? One that, despite what people may think, we actually do see in the game. A person who, with their obsession of monsters, eventually fled the castle during the Calamity and dedicated their life to researching these creatures. What if Kilton is the Chancellor referenced in these books? The first recipe book talks about fruitcake, which is said to be the princess's favorite, and we see her in the game. Perhaps the same can be said with the Chancellor, especially since his favorite was monster cake. It would make sense if he had an obsession with monsters. It explains why the royal family had access to monster extract a hundred years before Link wakes up. Even if Kilton isn't the Chancellor, it's not ridiculous to believe that he was involved with the royal family's research in some way. Maybe he was a part of the research on ancient technology, hence why he liked collecting machine parts, and he did the monster research in his spare time. Perhaps he was a Hylian, but thanks to the effects of the monster extract, developed a longer lifespan. Or he could have been a Sheikah, as they can live for over a century. Another possible quote-unquote origin story is a connection to the Happy Mask Salesman. There was a special Miiverse event, an official interview with the Happy Mask Salesman, in which he hints at reappearing in a new Zelda game, including the following quote. I've got some new masks too, if you'd like to try them on. And in Breath of the Wild, we see the Bokoblin, Moblin, Lizalfos, and Lionel masks. Ones that don't appear in any other Zelda game. This analysis brings me to the conclusion that Kilton isn't supposed to be viewed as evil. With evidence of monster research occurring a hundred years ago, it's possible that with the events of the Great Calamity, researching monsters was eventually looked upon as taboo. Maybe even due to what happened to the Sheikah technology. Because the royal family decided to dig it up, they unintentionally caused the downfall of the entire kingdom. But despite this, it's clear that the experimentation of monsters isn't inherently evil or malicious. It's true that not a single stable has a recipe posted which includes monster extract as an ingredient. Yet, in a parent's love, you make a monster cake for a young girl. When you give it to the mother, she says, What is… is this a monster cake? She can instantly name the food item, despite its ingredients. Chabi is always seen with monster extract, despite never even meeting Kilton. There's a cooking class within Gerudo Town, and one of Chef Ori Tamu's cookbooks has a whole section on monster extract. They seem to know a lot about it, including its effects. It's talked about as if it was any normal ingredient. Despite the rumors, many know about and use the spice. What the people are doing at the stables isn't necessarily propaganda. That would imply that they know there's nothing evil going on with Kilton. It's more so fear-mongering, because they don't understand it. Haas assumes that a shop with the words Fane and Bone are evil because of ignorance and false rumors. In fact, in a way it's hypocritical. Elixirs provide buffs to the person and are used every day. And one of their ingredients is monster parts. They even give them to Link on occasions when he rescues them from enemies. A lot of the armor Link upgrades at the fairy fountains requires monster parts as materials. And even if monster extract is malice, that doesn't mean the person using it is malicious. Emotions are known to create physical byproducts in the Zelda series, and Malice is no exception. It's not exclusive to Ganondorf or even Demise. The Evil Crystal, an item said to be pure crystallized monster Malice, is used to upgrade gear and be sold at the gear shop in Skyward Sword. In fact, there's a moment in Breath of the Wild where monster research helps someone. The side quest Medicinal Molduga has you bring Molduga guts to cure the sickness of Milena's husband. It's described as a rare disease, and the only thing that can save him is this item. 
By this logic, there's nothing wrong with Kilton's research or obsession with monsters. To summarize, Kilton was most likely someone who worked with the royal family that researched monsters. He eventually created Monster Extract, which may or may not have had an influence on his appearance or actions. Perhaps it's what made him obsessed with them, and ingestion of this spice eventually changed his skin color or other traits. It's possible that he's slowly transforming into a monster without becoming evil. A similar case would be Batrix. He was a friendly demon who turned into a human with the power of gratitude crystals. In this case, we have a friendly Hylian or Sheikah slowly turning into a monster. What I want you all to take away from this video is simply the following. Kilton is a really weird guy with a really weird obsession for monsters. The end. Thank you all for watching today's video. I really wasn't expecting there to be this much information, but it was sure fun to go down this rabbit hole. If you enjoyed this theory, I highly recommend taking a look at RMFH's video on Kilton. It's another fantastic video on him, and that link will be in the description. Some of this discussion was with another theorist, Cole, so shout out to him. I've been Nintendo Black Crisis, and I'll see you all next time. Nintendo Direct next week, maybe? <laughs>